In today's uh, short little video, we're going to look at uh, some of the auxiliary outputs that are uh, you find on some of the, these old analog scopes, and talk about uh, ways you could use them. So, uh, so we're going to look at a, this 465 here in a moment. But just to give you an idea of some of the outputs that are available, let's look at uh, one or two others here. This old scope here is a, a Tech 485. If we look at the auxiliary outputs on the back of this scope. Uh, kind of see right here. If they'll focus in well enough. There's a, uh, a z-axis uh, input. There's an a sweep. Uh, excuse me, z-axis. That's actually an input, not an output. Uh, putting a signal in there will cause the trace to intensify or dim. It can be useful for some application, particularly some XY applications. But we're not going to go into that one too much today. Um, there's an a sweep output on this one. That happens to be a, a ramping voltage that ramps along with the sweep. Um, so it might be useful to drive some other circuits and things like that so you know where the sweep is across the, the CRT. There's also, an uh, let's see, it's a B gate and an A gate. And what those are, those are outputs that go high when the sweep is active and go low when the sweep is retracing. Um, you know, very rarely used, but they could be useful sometimes to synchronize, you know, your circuits and things like that to what the scope is doing or vice versa. So those are some of the exa examples on this old 485. Let's take a look at uh, on this 465. It's a very, very popular scope. And it's got a different output on it that uh, will be really useful. We're going to show you some examples of. So looking at the back of this scope here, see if we'll be able to focus in on this and if it'll, we can read it. Um, so there's a uh, an A gate, same as uh, what I mentioned earlier, A gate and B gate. These go high when the A and B sweeps are active. But this one here is the channel 1 signal output. Okay, I've got a BNC connected to that because we're going to take a look at that. So what that's doing is the, it's a buffered output of the signal that's being applied to channel 1 on the scope. Okay, So if we kind of come back here to the front of the scope, I've got a signal applied here from my function generator. Okay, And uh, so I can actually see that on the screen. But now there's a buffered copy of that being made available on that connector off the back. So that piece of coax is coming up here, and I could, one of the places, we, one of the things we can do with that is drive, say, something like a frequency counter. So I can see I've got about a 50 kilohertz, 49.4 kilohertz signal coming out of my signal generator. So a real easy way to to measure that frequency, okay? And where where, where it's really useful is that that output has the ability to drive a 50 ohm load. So you might be probing something, you know, with a probe or something in your circuit. That might be a high impedance node, but you really want to draw, you know, put that signal into something, maybe a spectrum analyzer or another circuit that has got a low impedance input. So that you can essentially use the scope as a buffer. You can probe your signal of interest and then take the signal out of that back out of the back and use that to drive into the input of you know something else. So in some sense it's kind of like a, a buffer amplifier. Okay. But what's also really interesting about that, I'm gonna take the signal out of the uh, uh, frequency counter here, stick it into channel 2 of the scope. Okay, and if I turn on channel 2, so now I, I see the copy of my signal, and the that, that output is going to have some response to it, and basically its response is, is a function of how big the signal is on the screen, not necessarily what its voltage is, because if we look right now carefully, I'm at uh, 200 millivolts of division, okay, so I've got about a 400 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak signal here, and if I look at this signal that I've got on channel 2, I'm at 50 millivolts of division. Okay, so I've got 50, 100, oh, maybe 120 millivolts peak to peak. So it's, it's actually a lot smaller than this signal is here. But look, let's look at what happens. If I, if I bring my signal level down, let me reach up to my signal generator and bring the signal level down. You can see they both kind of drop down here. But uh, let's let's bring the sensitivity back up, and notice that I bring the sensitivity back up on the scope. Okay, both those signals are growing again. Now, what what gets interesting is once we get down to really low signal levels, let me kind of throw some attenuation in here on the scope on the signal generator. Okay, and uh, bring the signal up here a little bit. So now I'm at five millivolts of division. Okay, if I bring my signal level up here, and uh, let's set up my triggering a little bit better here. Boom. Okay, and uh, we'll adjust my amplitude. So 
let's kind of get it up to about, I'm looking at 5 millivolts of division, so there's a 5 millivolt uh, signal, 5 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak signal here now on, uh, on channel 1, but now if I look at channel 2, so there's a 10 millivolt per division uh, setting, and my signal is you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 millivolts. So I've just in basically went from 5 millivolts to 50, so I've actually got a gain of 10. So I've actually gained a factor of 10 in terms of sensitivity of my scope. I can't bring this down to less than 5 millivolts of division, but now I've essentially gone, got a signal here that is going you know, 5 divisions here now. Uh, for that same thing that I can only do one division. So at these very low signal level conditions, I essentially can use that output as a buffer and an amplifier uh, and make the signal even larger um, than uh, you know, 5 to, in this case, 50 millivolts. So it's a factor of 10. So I've improved this, the sensitivity of the scope by a factor of 10. So kind of a useful thing. You know, at the, at the higher signal levels, it's just a buffer, but at the lower signal levels, it can also be an amplifier and it actually improve the sensitivity of the scope. Now, as I mentioned, that output can drive a 50 ohm load. Right now, I'm loading it into 50 ohms. If we put a 50 ohm load on it, it would cut this gain by about a factor of two, but it still would be a gain of you know a gain of five as, as opposed to a gain of ten. So uh, that's pretty good. Now, not all scopes have that have that feature, but if they do, they can be really useful for some of these applications, like driving a counter or using it to increase the sensitivity of the scope. And if this if this scope does have it, sometimes that output is a mirror of channel 2 instead of channel 1. Uh, the gain uh, or the response of that output is not necessarily going to be calibrated, okay? And it may not be perfectly calibrated in this case either, but it is something that if you need to take a look at a low-level signal, it might be the only way to get there, okay? Even if it's uncalibrated, at least you've got, you've got something where you can magnify that signal up so you can actually see it. Uh, a couple of scopes that I have here um, that, that do have it, the response is different uh, from scope to scope. So um, it's something you just want to you know, be aware of. It's not going to be a perfectly calibrated thing, but it does give you a way of looking at some very low level signals and also give you a way of buffering you know, signals that you might be looking at in your circuit and using them to drive you know, other circuits or other instruments. So anyway, hope you found that helpful.